the colonial triumvirate of Australia, Britain and New Zealand handed power to the 3,100 Nauruan people in the shade of one of the aircraft which brought about lol overseas officials to witness the birth of the world's smallest republic. The islanders heard Brigadier Leslie King and his administration of Nauru with a message from the Queen. The founding president of Nauru, Mr. Amrita Robert, arrives in Sydney on June 18, 1968 credit. Trevor Dallin snorting piglets cavorted on the rock-hard clay near the dais. Minutes before the official proclamation of independence, a document signed by Australia's Governor-General, Lord Casey, Head Chief Hammer de Robert was voted Chairman of the new Council of State. It is expected that Chief de Robert, who led his people to constitutional coming of age through the United Nations last year, will be appointed President within six months. T-O-U-R-I-S-M A slow ripple of applause came from the gaily dressed crowd as Chief de Robert accepted the reins of government from Brigadier King. The chief later told reporters Nauru had already bought a ship from Scotland for about $4.3 million. This was the first of other purchasers and wood he used for phosphate and general cargo delivery and to build up inter-island trade. Now ruins Rose of Ine Jose, 16, and Margaret Jose, 21, displays the flag of the new independent Republic of Nauru during independence ceremonies the 31st of January 1968, credit. SMHHE said he had already begun negotiations with Japan to investigate commercial fishing possibilities with a view to starting a cannery. He planned to turn Nauru into a major tourist resort, and said he had been negotiating with various interested parties about building hotels and guest houses and attracting airlines to touch down at Nauru. Tom Tom's Herald knew Nora there was never a national birthday party like this. Nauru is celebrating independence with a frigate bird hunt, a barbecue of exotic flying fish, an Australian rules football match, a fireworks display and the wild beatings of Tom Tom's signaling the glad tidings. With the limitless ocean rolling in on its 12-mile circumference, this Pacific party is a boomer, no expenses spared. The island's indigenous population of 3,000 can afford it. Its rich phosphate deposits represent $30,000 a year for each Nauru and family in the present population. At 6.30 p.m. Today I saw 500 islanders in their silk and sandaled finery wipe tears of joy and pride from their eyes as they watched the flags of the British, Australian and New Zealand governments lowered for the last time at a grand government house reception. A trumpeter from the RAAF Central Band played the retreat. A burly Nauru and guard commander of the police barked, Royal Salute, present arms, then the band played, God Save the Queen, and so ended 80 years of colonial rule. German, United Nations, Japanese and finally administration by the British Phosphate Commission, principally Australian. There will be an even more poignant moment at noon tomorrow, when Nauru's new national flag of blue, gold and white is hoisted. From midnight tonight the 6,000 Narawans, Chinese, Gilbert and Ellis Islanders and sprinkling of Europeans go it alone as one of the world's smallest and most affluent nations. The Australian Minister for Territories, Mr. C. E. Barnes, told me he could hand over the affairs of the island to its own people with an easy conscience.